Hello and welcome. My name is Bob Short. I'm the Director of Faith Formation here at St. Sebastian's. And today we have a very unusual event at the church. We have Vespers at 4 p.m. to celebrate the first Sunday of Advent. And maybe Vespers is a word you've never heard before. So we're going to tell you a little bit about what that is. Vespers is also known as Evening Prayer of the Liturgy of the Hours. The Liturgy of the Hours is a prayer. It is a cycle of psalms, prayers, scripture readings done by every single priest, every single nun, every single deacon, sisters, and brothers, and many lay people who are not required to pray in this way, but love it and find it brings them closer to God. And I'm doing this for you today because it is something that I've been doing for about five years and has brought me a lot of joy, a lot of knowledge, a lot of peace. Um, and this brought me much closer to God than, than I ever imagined. And so I'm bringing you today five reasons why you might want to come to Vespers tonight at St. Sebastian's and maybe choose the Liturgy of the Hours as your way to go deeper this Advent. Reason number one, following Jesus and the saints. So to this very day, priests, religious, and lay people are praying by chanting, singing, or reciting the Psalms, the book of Psalms, this book of ancient hymns to God. Um, Jesus prayed in this way. The saints prayed in this way. Um, we might feel strange about using another's words to, to express our deepest longings to God, but, you know, Jesus himself, or perhaps your greatest saint, did not feel these qualms, did not find it strange. Rather, they were able to build on these prayers written by somebody else, inspired by the Holy Spirit, I might add. These are prayers directly from the Bible. They were able to build on these prayers and adding adding their own words on top of the strong foundation. You know, we mentioned scripture. To pray the liturgy of the hours is to be deeply steeped in scripture. You know, one thing that we need as Christians is to see things with a biblical worldview. This is not just something for evangelicals. This is something especially for us Catholics. The Bible is a Catholic book. And the more familiar we are with it, the more we will see things through the eyes of God, through the eyes of Christ. Um, Liturgy of the Hours is also a fantastic way for us to gain familiarity with how the church teaches us to read the Old Testament. Number three, the Liturgy of the Hours is where you can find much depth and much richness. While praying the Liturgy of the Hours this morning before Mass, I was praying something they call the Office of Readings. It's a section of Psalms. And then a long reading from the Bible. In this case, the first chapter of the book of the prophet Isaiah, who we'll be hearing a lot from this Advent and all Advents. And then each, in each Office of Readings, there is a non-biblical reading, a reading from a saint or one of the church fathers, one of these teachers from the very earliest centuries of Christianity. These people who um, brought out all the subtlety and beauty and made explicit what is implicit in the Bible. If, if you are wondering, you know, if you've ever opened up the Catholic Catechisms, who came up with this? Who came up with this, this beautiful and complete system of belief? Um, this is the result of centuries of prayer, of reflection, of reading the scriptures and applying them to daily life, of people like these church fathers. Um, and today there's a reading from Cyril of Jerusalem talking about the two comings of Christ, the coming of Christ in the stable in Bethlehem, and the coming of Christ that we've been hearing about in Mass at the end of ordinary time and today, the coming of Christ in glory at the end of time, which we hope for. 
Um, number four, Liturgy of the Hours is a school of prayer. It is a it is a way that we can see the divinely inspired prayers of the Psalms and let them become our own. Speaking for myself, I guess I was uh, I find I found prayer very very odd when I first became a Christian, and I wasn't giving God my entire self in my prayer. And it wasn't until I started praying with the Psalms that I almost that the Psalms gave me permission in a way to really open myself up to God. Um, the Psalms are not shy about emotions like anger, depression, things that we might feel, you know, let me keep that in the closet. I, 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 I can't show that to God. God knows about it. God wants to heal you. It is a school for us to let it all out. And to let it all out in a way that is not simply giving God our Christmas list. I need all these things from you, God, but is based in praise of God. And that is our last reason. This is a prayer that is God-centered and not self-centered. Very often, I'm very happy. And in Liturgy of the Hours, in this preset cycle, I'm praying a psalm of lament, of grief. That might not be how I feel right at this moment. Why am I praying this psalm of lament? Or it might be the complete opposite. I might be feeling really crummy and praying a, uh, this ecstatic song of praise. In the Liturgy of the Hours, we're pulled out of, out of ourself, of our own temporary experience, and are thinking about the prayer of Christ. Say so the prayer of Christ on the cross, Psalm 22. We might not be feeling very Psalm 22 today, but while, while we pray Psalm 22, we are there at the, Christ, at the cross with Jesus as he completes his work of saving us. Also, you might not be feeling very Psalm 22 today, but there are people in your life on the other side of the world who are you know, carrying their own cross and it feels extremely heavy right this second. This prayer is a way of expressing solidarity with people. You know, the Bible tells us that we should we should be expressing solidarity in prayer with all people as a way of expressing our common priesthood as Christians. And this is a beautiful way of doing so. Now, how can you try this out? Well, there's a very easy way, and this is a way that some of you who might be uh, participating in our Facebook live stream this afternoon might participate in Vespers tonight. Whether on ibrevery.org, if you'd like to follow along on your computer, or if you'd like to follow along on a smartphone or a tablet or some other device like that, uh, you can find ibrevery in the App Store. Now, bravery is one of those words that seems to be spelled differently than it's pronounced. It is, uh, I bravery is I B R E V I A R Y. Now, a bravery is the book that contains the cycle of prayers. It's not just something that's online, it's something that for centuries has been printed in a book. To get the entire thing, which many people do, in fact, I have the entire thing, it is a $150 investment for four books. And so here's, here's mine. But there's also abbreviated versions, which are designed specifically for lay people in mind. There's a single volume a book called Christian Prayer, which you can get for probably about $25, $27. Um, This contains all that you'll need to pray pray morning prayer, evening prayer, like tonight's Vespers, um, and night prayer what you might have heard at called Compline. And then if that is too big for you, there's an even shorter version, and guess what it's called? Shorter Christian Prayer. As you can see, it's very slim. So this is not going to be the last of these videos. I'll 
you'll see me again this Advent as I take you through how we pray the Liturgy of the Hours, if you're interested. Um, but this is a great introduction so far. I hope I'll see you in person tonight um, at 4 p.m. And don't worry, if you come in person, we'll have some printed out sheets so you know exactly what to pray, what to say. Um, I hope I'll see you there. And of course, we'll also be live streaming on Facebook. I'll see you then.